Welcome to another episode of Fort Bend Mathematics Tutoring. Take a moment to soothe your nerves. Remember, these is just numbers. They can't hurt nobody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Today's lesson is going to be about the quotient rule. The quotient rule is used in calculus classes, and we will start with the actual quotient rule. The quotient rule, ladies and gentlemen, when you're trying to find the first derivative of a function in the form of h of x, which equals to f of x over g of x, meaning that you have a function divided by a function, a.k.a. you have a rational expression, a.k.a. you have a fraction. So when you have a fraction, all right, and you want to find the first derivative of it, you can use the quotient rule. The quotient rule, ladies and gentlemen, is this part right here that I'm enclosing in a circle here. So in order to take the first derivative of this function h, I would take the derivative of the numerator f, times the denominator g minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by the denominator squared and that is the quotient rule so f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared that is the quotient rule ladies and gentlemen and you'll see this formula written throughout the examples that I have for you today alright let's start with our first example here notice that we have a function 2x plus 3 divided by negative x squared and over here ladies and gentlemen you'll notice that I have that f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared already written for me in the corner in the upper right the reason for that ladies and gentlemen the more you will write down a formula when you're dealing with math problems the more it'll stick with you especially during a test and I know that's important for many of you so always write down the formula every single time you do an example that helps the formula uh, stick with you as well as you can easily memorize it and then you'll just be more familiar with it so always a good practice to do that. So my first step in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, is to identify the numerator as f and the denominator as g. So these are just my labels for the numerator and the denominator. So that way when I refer to f, I know I'm referring to the 2x plus 3. And when I refer to g, I'll be referring to the negative x squared, that part that's in the denominator there. So after I identify my f and my g, in order to find the derivative of this problem, I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 2, times the denominator, which is negative x squared, minus the numerator, which is 2x plus 3, times the derivative of the denominator, which is negative 2x. All right. And then all of this is going to be over the denominator squared. So I'll end up with negative x squared squared. OK, so that's my first step. So multiplying 2 times negative x squared gives me negative 2x squared. This negative here times this negative 2x will make a positive 2x, which I can distribute to the binomial. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. And then all of this is going to be over negative x squared squared, which is going to be x to the fourth power. So that's what I'll end up with there. All right. From there, ladies and gentlemen, I can combine any like terms I may have. And I end up with the negative 2x squared plus 4x squared, giving me a positive 2x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth power. Now, this is a rational expression, a.k.a. a fraction, so you're still responsible for simplifying your result. Notice that all three elements of my ratio here, of my fraction of this rational expression, can be reduced by x to the first power. So now I'll end up with 2x plus 6 all over x to the third power. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be my derivative. All right, so there I have it. So 2x plus 6 divided by x to the third power is the result of the original problem. So what happened initially, ladies and gentlemen, in number one, I have the 2x plus 3 divided by negative x squared. I do recognize that this is a fraction, a rational expression. I label the numerator as f, the denominator as g. And using the derivative for the quotient rule here, I have f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared. I did just that, which meant that I took the derivative of the numerator, which is 2, times the denominator of negative x squared minus the numerator, which is 2x plus 3, times the derivative of the denominator, which is negative 2x. Then I distributed 
the numerator to end up with this negative 2x squared plus 4x squared plus 6x. So remember, our formula here calls for us to square the original denominator, and that's exactly what I did. I took this negative x squared, and I wrote it here, and I squared it to end up with x to the fourth power. Remember, a negative base squared gives you a positive result. So that's how I ended up with x to the fourth power. From there, ladies and gentlemen, your next step is going to be combining your like terms, and then with our 2x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth power, we can recognize that all three elements here have x in common, so that means I simplified all the terms by x to end up with 2x plus 6 divided by x to the third power, and that concludes problem number one. All right, let's continue on. With our next example, I have the following. We have 4x divided by 3x squared minus 5. Notice that I've labeled the numerator as f and the denominator as g. So using the quotient rule, which is f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared, we're going to go ahead and find the derivative of this function here. So I'll start with taking the derivative of the numerator, that f. So the derivative of 4x is just 4 times my denominator of 3x squared minus 5 minus the numerator, which is 4x, times the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be 6x. All of this is going to be over the denominator squared. So this is going to be 3x squared, the quantity of 3x squared, minus 5 squared, and that's what I have thus far. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from here, I'm going to distribute the numerator. I'm going to multiply everything out. I'm getting my arrows pop in here. All right, and this is going to be the negative 4x times that 6x that I'll be multiplying there. So 4 times 3x squared gives me 12x squared. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Negative 4x times 6x is a negative 24x squared. All of this is going to be over the denominator squared, which is that 3x squared minus 5 squared. And ladies and gentlemen, most of the time you can just leave your denominator as it is. You really don't have to carry out any multiplication in it most of the time. In our numerator, we can combine our like terms. We have 12x squared minus 24x squared. That gives me a negative 12x squared minus 20 all over 3x squared minus 5 squared. All right, then you can look to see if you can do any further operations. I do notice that I can factor out a negative 4, and depending on your book, it may or may not require you to do that. But to show that step, you're always responsible for simplifying your result, so there just may be an opportunity to simplify this even further. For instance, ladies and gentlemen, if I factor out a negative 4 in the numerator, I'll end up with negative 4 times 3x squared plus 5 all over 3x squared minus 5 squared. All right. Notice how close these factors are, ladies and gentlemen. In the numerator, I have a factor of 3x squared plus 5. In the denominator, it's 3x squared minus 5. So I can't simplify it, but notice that it was just a sign change away on that second term inside the parentheses that would have allowed us to continue to reduce our problem. So always factor it out, simplify it to make sure that you have your final result because you are responsible for simplifying the result. So either one of these results is going to be acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. And that completes problem number two. All right, let's continue on to our next example here. In example three, we have the following problem. We have the quantity of 3x squared plus 2 times 7x minus 2 raised to the negative first power. I'm showing you that I'll end up using the quotient rule, that f prime g minus fg prime divided by g squared. But this problem doesn't look like the other problems, right? Let's check out what's going on here. So notice, because I have this negative exponent on the base of 7x minus 2, I can actually rewrite this problem as 3x squared plus 2 divided by 7x minus 2. 
and this is going to be the same thing as what I had before. Notice that now I do have a rational expression, aka a fraction, so I can go about the business of labeling the numerator as f, the denominator as g, and then I can just apply the quotient rule of that f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared to this problem in order to find the first derivative. So that's exactly what we'll do here. All right, for starters, ladies and gentlemen, it starts out with finding the derivative of the numerator. So the first derivative of 3x squared plus 2 is going to be 6x using your power rule. All right, then that's going to be times the denominator, which is 7x minus 2, minus the numerator, which is 3x squared plus 2, times the derivative of the denominator, which is 7. All right. All of that is going to be over the denominator squared, which is 7x minus 2 squared. From here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to continue by distributing the 6x inside of the parentheses. So here I have my arrows popping. I can combine that negative here and that 7 to distribute a negative 7 inside of the second set of parentheses there. So this gives me the result that is 42x squared minus 12x minus 21 x squared minus 14. All of this is going to be over the denominator squared which is 7x minus 2 squared like so. Alright, your final step ladies and gentlemen of course is going to be to try to simplify this as much as possible. So we'll start by combining our like terms and in the numerator I have 42 x squared minus 21 x squared that gives me 21 x squared then I'll bring down this negative 12x minus 14 and all of this is going to be over 7x minus 2 squared. All right. Of course you would try to see if you could factor the numerator, okay, if it's factorable, and if you end up with any common factors here in the denominator. In this case, ladies and gentlemen, the 21x squared minus 12x minus 14 will not give you a factor that you can simplify further with. So therefore, this is going to be your final answer here. And that's that. All right. Let's continue on to the next problem. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, problem number four, I have five divided by the quantity of x plus six squared. In the numerator, I have labeled that as f over the denominator, which I have labeled as g. Here, I'm gonna once again use the quotient rule, which is f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, I'll end up with the derivative of the numerator, which is gonna be zero, times the denominator, which is x plus six squared, minus the numerator which is 5 times the de derivative times the derivative of the denominator which I'll need to use the chain rule because I have a quantity raised to a power I can use the chain rule in order to derive this so taking the derivative of the denominator I'll have 2 times x plus 6 times 1 taking the derivative of the inside all over the denominator squared which is going to be x plus 6 squared and I'll use brackets to show that I'm going to square the, even that. All right, so that's squared now. Let's go ahead and fix that too. That's better. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we know that zero times anything is zero. So I'll just end up with this negative 10 multiplying the negative 5 times 2 times 1 times this quantity of x plus 6 all over x plus 6 raised to the fourth power. All right. From there, ladies and gentlemen, you can notice that I have x plus 6 to the first power in the numerator over x plus 6 to the fourth power in the denominator. We can simplify that at that point, ladies and gentlemen, by simply saying that one of these x plus 6's will cancel out, and that'll leave me with 3 in the denominator. From there, I have negative 10 over the quantity of x plus 6 to the third power, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is my result right here. So what happened was I ended up with 5 over x plus 6 to the second power. I labeled it as f, the denominator g, and then I used the quotient rule, that f prime g minus f g prime over g squared, to end up with the derivative of the numerator, which is 0, times the denominator of x plus 6 squared, minus the numerator, which is just 5, times the derivative of the denominator. And notice I had to use the chain rule on the denominator. So this 2 came down. I then wrote the exact quantity of x plus 6 after 
of that, then times the derivative of the inside of the parentheses, which is 1, all over the denominator squared. So my denominator is x plus 6 squared, and I squared that. From there, ladies and gentlemen, I identify the fact that I have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. So you're always responsible with simplifying your result. A big problem that many students have, ladies and gentlemen, is not necessarily the calculus, but the algebra. All right, So we always have to put our algebra rules first in the fact of simplifying and making sure that all of our steps in between are done correctly. So make sure you simplify your rational expressions, aka your fractions, as much as possible. I had x plus 6 to the first power in the numerator and x plus 6 to the fourth power in the denominator and I was able to cancel out one of those from the numerator and the denominator. Alright, that left me with negative 10 over the quantity of x plus 6 to the third power, ladies and gentlemen, and that is our final answer right here. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, hoping that you enjoyed this lesson of ours today. And as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, if you find yourself on Facebook, please like our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations. Did you learn anything? Do you need to review your notes? Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself. I am learning mathematicals. <laughs>